Hi, welcome to IB Chemistry Option D Drugs and Medicine video number four. Today we're going to be talking about stimulants. Stimulants are drugs that act to increase mental awareness and alertness. They help um, prevent drowsiness and weariness. And the way that they, these drugs act is by affecting uh, the levels of certain neurotransmitters in the brain and uh, they tend to act on the uh, sorry, in the sympathetic uh, nervous system, the SNS, and that is the uh, part of the central system or the nervous system that is in charge of all the autonomous um, functions like breathing, heart rate. All right. So uh, the way that they tend to act in general, all right, is that they're going to uh, facilitate breathing. Uh, because they cause the relaxation of the air passages. If you facilitate that, then more uh, oxygen is going to go into um, the bloodstream and that's going to increase uh, heart rate because we want to uh, distribute that oxygen much more. And so the heart rate can, uh, as it increases, it can cause palpitations. Uh, in addition, as we are producing more energy because uh, having more oxygen will increase uh, cellular respiration. Uh, this will cause uh, reduced appetite, all right, and will cause our pupils to dilate, all right, because we want to have greater alertness. We have more intakes of um, the sensory perception, the, the world around us, uh, but this also may cause a blurred vision because there's too much light coming in, all right. In excess, Stimulants, and we're talking about stimulants in general, uh, can cause restlessness, sleeplessness, hallucinations, and uh, also uh, delusions. So ideas that you can do things beyond what your capabilities are. Uh, the first type of stimulants that we're going to talk about is a slightly more regulated type of uh, stimulants that are called amphetamines. Amphetamines is just a general uh, name for drugs that have a a chemical structure similar to that of adrenaline or epinephrine, all right, and therefore they can mimic their action of, of epinephrine on the sympathetic uh, nervous system. Therefore, because they can mimic that action, they are called sympathomimetic because they act on the sympathetic uh, nervous system and they're mimicking the action of adrenaline or epinephrine, all right. Uh, sympathomimetic drugs. All right, act on the autonomous responses. They um, are the ones that we cannot control. We have no uh, control over the disorder. We are, our, our heart rate, our reflexes, anything that does not go through the brain. All right. Now here are the structure of adrenaline and the structure of the amphetamine. And initially, you may not find them that similar, but notice that adrenaline has a phenyl group followed by one, two carbons, and an amine, all right? And phetamine similarly has a phenyl group, one, two carbons, followed by an amine. Now, in the case of adrenaline, the amine is a secondary amine because it's directly connected to two different carbons, all right? In the case of regular amphetamine, all right, it is a primary amine, all right? We'll talk about uh, methylamphetamine, which is a secondary amine, um, uh, amine and therefore it mimics better um, the structure of adrenaline. But because they have similar shapes, and that amine can be bent downwards in amphetamine, because they have similar shapes, they can fit into the same receptors uh, in the brain and therefore stimulate the same areas, all right? Since adrenaline is a neurotransmitter that helps the body, uh, it, it's actually the cause of the flight or fight, fight or flight um, response in which we are coping with pain, with fear, with all those kind of things. It's, it's a kind of thing that works for our body to get ready to uh, get involved and, and, and actually not worry about um, pain or or uh, injury or anything like that, but rather survival. So these are the kind of things that we're going to be using. So amphetamines uh, have similar effects to those of adrenaline, so it increases their heart rate and the blood pressure. It increases uh, blood flow to the brain and to the muscles, so you're ready 
to use your energy more. It uh, allows for better airflow to the lungs and therefore more oxygenation of the blood and therefore more release of energy through cellular respiration. This is why when um, you're under a, in a stressful um, situation where you have a lot of adrenaline or if you were taking amphetamines, you can, you can actually use um, more, you can have more force because your muscles actually can use more of the energy, release more energy at one uh, moment. Because of the increased uh, blood flow to the brain, you also have increased mental awareness. All right? So amphetamines uh, can be used to increase uh, uh, focus and attentiveness. In fact, during World War II, um, soldiers were normally given amphetamines to keep them um, working and attent in the, in the, uh, on, on the front, uh, especially if they were involved in the uh, bombers. All right? Um, amphetamine also uh, can simulate the uh, effects of another um, neurotransmitter that's called nor norepinephrine or nor noradrenaline, which acts also directly on uh, um, and on the communication with the, uh, the sympathetic uh, nervous system. And so it acts on the heart and the amygdala. The amygdala is that kind of reptile part of our brain that is all about survival, all right? The problems that we have with amphetamines is that uh, in addition to causing dependence, ca causing tolerance, dependence, and addiction, and remember, anytime that you talk about addiction, you're going to be looking at the social consequences, uh, how, what you need to do in order to get your fix. So again, uh, that's going to have consequences of wanting to have uh, um, um, robbery, uh, you can be, uh, uh, it can cause homelessness because you are using all your resources for that. Uh, you can get into prostitution and again, uh, exposure to uh, diseases like H HIV AIDS and hepatitis, all right? But in addition to all of that, in short, a short-term use of amphetamines can cause increase of heart and breathing rates. Uh, because you have so much oxygenation to the blood, to the brain, you can feel, um, dizziness uh, because it does not, um, you don't feel the appetite, you may lose weight uh, and it can also cause extreme fatigue when you come down because you have used all of that energy reserve. Instead, when you're looking at long-term use of amphetamines, all right, uh, because your brain gets used to that high of like having a lot of energy and being able to do this, to this uh, and you get tolerance, meaning that it takes a greater amount of the drug each time, uh, you can get to uh, feelings of clinical or psychological depression, all right? You're going to have uh, reduced resistance to infections because your body is using its resources for making energy rather than actually building um, the immune system. It can cause bra brain damage. It can uh, have effects of causing constipation, emotional instability, and because it causes um, dependence and addiction, you're always going to have problems with withdrawal. One of the problems as well is that because you're going to have so much action on the, on the heart, it can cause heart disease. All right, Methylamphetamines are very, very similar in structure, only that they have connected to, and I, let me just see if I have my image here, all right, instead of having just an NH2 there, we have another methyl group connected there, just like you would have in adrenaline, and therefore it makes it more like adrenaline, and therefore it's more active, and it has greater additive, uh, addictive uh, power, so it's going to have more of that dependence and, and addiction, all right? So uh, methamphetamines are uh, much closer and uh, significantly more dangerous to the body. This is one of the reasons why uh, there are so, such controlled um, substances. A second type of stimulant uh, that is out there is uh, nicotine. And nicotine is an alkaloid. Remember, plant-derived uh, base that contains a heterocycle and a tertiary amine. Well, here we can see all of that very quickly. There we have a heterocycle where we have five carbons uh, and a nitrogen. We also have a tertiary amine. 
that tertiary amine is connected, that nitrogen is connected directly to three different carbon atoms, all right? And it is uh, removed or is taken from uh, the tobacco plant uh, more importantly, but it's also present in small amounts in the leaves of the pepper plant, the, to the tomato plants, and other plants like that, um, the potato, eggplant, all right? So, but of course, you, you know about it. Tobacco is the one that has it in the greatest concentration, so that's why tobacco is what is used to, uh, to make cigarettes. All right, the most common method of um, intake is inhalation, but you can have um, people that take nicotine through patches. That's normally if you want to stop uh, smoking. Uh, as well, you can do it through chewing uh, tobacco, uh, which of course would mean that you would get it uh, through contact with the skin in your uh, in your mouth, which is uh, mucosa. All right. Now let's look at the structure of this. Notice that it's a lot of carbon hydrogen bonds. There's very little polarity. There's a little bit of that amine and that nitrogen there, but overall it's a very nonpolar molecule. All right. Because it's so nonpolar, polar, and it that makes it fat soluble, it can travel through the blood-brain barrier quite easily and therefore affect the brain quite rapidly. All right? Now, it does not mimic, all right, the uh, structure of adrenaline, but it's the way that it acts is it helps the formation of more adrenaline, the release of more adrenaline, and so by having, by increasing the amount of adrenaline present uh, in the system, it can act on the sympathetic uh, nervous system and so has those increases that we saw for um, amphetamines, all right? So the short-term uh, effects of uh, nicotine, uh, it is increases the concentration, okay, of, um, it increases co your, your mental concentration, so it allows you to concentrate better. It relieves uh, tension and boredom. A lot of smokers say that when they're not smoking, they feel that they're like they're bored. Uh, it counters fat fatigue because it, the release of more energy due to the increase in um, adrenaline actually gives you more energy. It increases the heart rate and uh, the blood pressure, all right? Um, it may seem uh, counterintuitive, because, but because it's uh, a stimulant, it also opens uh, your lung, um, your breathing rate. It increases your breathing rate and it releases the, the respiratory vessels, so you more, more um, you can take more air in. Obviously, it also means that you can take more of the nicotine in because you're smoking and you're putting that into your system, so it has uh, that effect. It is also antidiuretic, all right, so it increases, it decreases your urine production and it decreases appetite, all right. Long-term use, it can cause uh, increased blood pressure, uh, increased uh, risk of heart disease, uh, coronary thrombosis, which is, means that small bits of plaque that form on your uh, arteries and veins can actually be released and they can form uh, blockages that actually can be very dangerous. It uh, increases atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis, remember, is the, um, for, uh, the hardening of the blood vessels, all right? And so that is not going to be good. That's one of the reasons why it increases blood pressure. Uh, it also uh, causes or increases the risk of peptic ulcers, all right, because it, you're going to be increasing uh, the production of gastric acids, but because you don't have appetite, you don't have food for those gastric acids to be acting on, um, on anything, all right, so they can only act on the stomach. Uh, obviously, long term, you're going to have uh, withdrawal symptoms because it, it causes dependence. All right, there's tolerance, dependence, and addiction that form with nicotine. Now, separate than nicotine itself, but because of the method of intake, uh, which is smoking in the most case, in most cases, uh, it will also cause lung disease and greater risk of lung, throat, and mouth cancers. All right, so that's the big problem with uh, nicotine. Um, People who uh, quit smoking will have significant um, withdrawal syndrom syndrom symptoms, and which is why uh, sometimes chewing gums with nicotine or skin patches with nicotine are um, recommended. So you don't have to quit uh, what is called cold turkey, but you actually get some of the drug 
uh, but in smaller amounts and in a method that is less toxic to your body because all of those extra chemicals that are in the smoke are what um, cause some of the worst type of disease that uh, nicotine can cause. Um, Caffeine is another alkaloid, and it is the most widely used stimulant in the world, all right? And again, it's an alkaloid, so that means that it's plant-derived, it has a heterocycle, and a tertiary amine. Let's look at that. We have one heterocycle there, we have a second heterocycle here, and importantly, this right here is our tertiary amine. It looks like the one down here would be a tertiary amine as well, but that is an amide, so let's just make sure that we are using the right amine, all right? Uh, that one in the smaller five-member ring is actually the tertiary amine it's connected directly to three other carbons, all right? Now, caffeine is present in many different plants, including coffee, tea, and chocolate, all right? Uh, again, one of the easiest ones to remove is from coffee, even though the tea plant actually contains higher um, concentrations, it's more difficult to remove, and that's why um, the most common way to do it is to drink coffee. All right? Now, the way that um, caffeine works is slightly different. Caffeine works because it's a respiratory stimulant, all right? That which may sound weird, all right, it does not act uh, by being sympathomimetic like the other um, stimulants that we've talked about, but it increases the respiratory uh, rate. If you have an increase in respiratory rate, you're going to have more oxygen. That's going to cause your heart rate to go up, all right, your energy release to go up, all right, because you're going to have more cellular respiration with that increased amount of oxygen flowing through your blood, and that's what gives caffeine its effects, all right? When you have a low dose of caffeine, it will increase mental alertness and your mental energy. Uh, it acts as a diuretic, all right? Uh, so it means it increases uh, urine production, which can cause dehydration if the only thing that you're drinking is something like coffee. It also uh, decreases appetite. It's just a temporary suppression, but it will decrease uh, how hungry you feel. And in high doses, because you get so much of it, uh, it can cause anxiety and irritability, all right? It can cause insomnia because you have too much energy. Um, it also causes dependence and tolerance. You need um, more uh, higher doses of coffee or to of caffeine in order to feel awake, all right? And it causes uh, withdrawal symptoms. If you have seen people out there that don't have their coffees, you know what I'm talking about, all right? Um, so, in this particular case, it's one of the few things that we, we may talk about addiction, but it doesn't have the social implications of most other uh, illegal drugs um, that are out there, all right? Um, caffeine can have synergistic effects um, with several drugs, and one of them is analgesic. So, caffeine and ibuprofen or aspirin sometimes are used in order to uh, strengthen the pain-killing effect because it helps the drug be uh, uh, absorbed by the body much more readily, all right? And so that's kind of the things uh, that you will see um, um, in order to... Ephed ephedrine, I think, is one of those that combines ibuprofen and caffeine in order to be more, uh, more active, all right? Symptoms of caffeine withdrawal. Again, if you've seen people in the morning, you can see... Uh, many times it can be caffeine, uh, sorry, caffeine, look what I'm saying. Uh, it can be headaches, they're ir uh, irritable, they are unable to concentrate, and it's because they just don't, haven't had enough of that um, caffeine. Again, caffeine is just, if you have too much, it also does affect your concentration levels. If you have too little and you're addicted to it, you cannot concentrate because your body has gotten used to that. All right? So keep that in mind. That's it for stimulants. We will continue with our next uh, video. Thank you.